Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Usually, I do discussion videos about Pokemon news and speculation on new games, uh, new things that the Pokemon company is doing, any of those sorts of things, but today, I wanted to look back. I want to look at the history of reused Pokemon models. Now, when Sword and Shield was coming out, there was a lot of controversy surrounding the models that Game Freak was using in the game, and their claim that they were new, even though most fans looked at it and said, these look very similar to the ones from the 3DS. Now, this history of reusing Pokemon models is nothing new, and that's what I want to discuss in today's video. So sit back and relax, and let's discuss the history of Pokemon models. There were a lot of times last year, or two years ago now, oh my goodness, that it felt like a lot of Pokemon fans had short, you know, histories with the franchise. There was a lot of outrage and a lot of outcry over the fact that models were getting reused. And listen, there was two reasons behind it. The first of which is because Game Freak did bad PR. They tried to tell us that these models were brand new, the animations were brand new, and all of this was newly made for the Nintendo Switch and for Pokemon Sword and Shield. When in reality, a lot of these models behaved and did the exact same things as the models back on the Nintendo 3DS with Pokemon X and Y, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Sword and Shield, not Sword and Shield, Sun and Moon, and eventually Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But the interesting thing is that they never marketed these models as one-offs. Back in the 3DS, when they moved Pokemon over into three dimensions from 2D games, they were very open about saying, we have created these models to future-proof. We are making these models with the idea that for years down the line, we're going to be able to use them in games, and it's going to be able to smooth development time. That was always what was said. I can recall executives at Game Freak and trailers and interviews, them being very happy with the fact that they had decided to do this. When you looked at these models, when you took the files for some of these 3DS games and people brought them onto the computer, they data mined them, they took a look at the models, they were made in very high quality renders. They were just then scaled down for the 3DS. But these models were meant to, to stand the test of time. There are two criticisms that can be had here. One is that the models aren't exactly the most full of life. As you can see on the screen right now, Pokemon Battle Revolution was a game developed by Genius Sonority. Sonority, yes, Sonority. Back in the early 2000s on the Wii. This was a battle simulator. And as you can see from some of these character models, they were full of expression. They were full of life. They looked more alive, and this is a Wii game from two th from the from the mid two thousands, and for a lot of this, the models look not better, but they look more full of life, full of expression. They look like they might exist. Whereas the models in Sword and Shield and the models in the three DS era of Pokemon in general are incredibly static, and I think that for a lot of people, they confused anger towards what the models were and anger towards Game Freak telling us these were new models. And these two things kind of got conflated together. And it was it was tragic because I think when Sword and Shield's buildup was happening, we could have had a much better discussion about Pokemon models than the chaos that it ultimately devolved into. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them are not subscribed. Now, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time and just go down below, hit that red button, subscribe, and you will never miss another upload. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, if you go back further and you take a look at the larger history of Pokemon, reusing models is nothing new. There were models that were created for the first and second Pokemon Stadium games that were being reused way up into the Wii era. Now, to be fair, it wasn't Game Freak who was doing this. These models were originally made in the original Pokemon Stadium, which never released in America, it only released in Japan, and never released outside of Japan and came to the West. But these models were in Pokemon Stadium 2, which was the release that went worldwide. Some of these models for early Kanto and Johto Pokemon were models that got reused and recycled in Pokemon Colosseum, in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, and eventually in Pokemon Battle Revolution. But because the models were of a different feel, because the models were designed with more expressional features, with animations when they fell and fainted, with animations for various different attacks, for different reaction animations for when they were hit by attacks, 
the overall impression by the community was different, and the overall lack of updating was seen, at least in my opinion, in a different light. If you look at some of these old Kanto and Johto models, you can see a drastic dip in quality. These animations and these designs, these riggings for these old Pokemon models back in the older games look starkly different from the ones that we got in some of the newer games. And it's ultimately very interesting to me that this entire dialogue surrounding models really has been up the ante has been upped on the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is a much more powerful system. One would fairly expect that Pokemon games were going to take a jump when they got onto the Switch. And I think it's also important to be said that We've seen a variety of different gameplay styles on the Switch. We've gotten our spin-off games, our Pokemon Unite most recently. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon has come to the Switch. We've had remakes in the style of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And then we've had the core games, Sword and Shield. And on the Switch, we've had brand new things that we never would have expected for Pokemon games. We got DLC, which is something that we've never had for a mainline Pokemon game before. Game Freak, the Pokemon company, Nintendo as a whole, have been experimenting more on the Switch with this property. And they've been giving us more content more spaced out. Unite is a summer release. We're waiting on a Detective Pikachu game for the Nintendo Switch that we got confirmed at this point years ago. We're expecting two new Pokemon games very soon in the form of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the models of which are being made by Ilka even though they appear to be very similar to the models that we've gotten in Sword and Shield. And then we're getting the next step. We're getting Legends Arceus. And I think Legends Arceus and the models in which we see in these games are going to provide us with a lot of insight into what Game Freak is looking at for the future of Pokemon games as a whole. Now the world itself barring any discussion of graphics, which I understand in models, which this video is about. The world looks to be a more advanced form of the open world format that we saw in the wild areas of Sword and Shield. Will the character models and the Pokemon models continue to be improved upon as well? This is an ever-changing dialogue. This is an ever-evolving dialogue. It's something that I think we're going to be able to, be, to have as a community for years to come. Game Freak was out of their element, it feels like, with the step to 3D. It looks as if they really didn't know what their approach was going to be, and I think it's been very obvious based on the different graphical styles that we've seen. For those of you who have short memories, look at X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. The world, the chibi designs, are very different from what they eventually became in Sun and Moon, where the characters got a lot more realistic looking, the gameplay as a whole looked a lot blurrier compared to X and Y, and then when they made the jump over to Sword and Shield on the Switch, those models got refined and polished a bit, and the world was changed ever so slightly. But even in that vein, they experimented with models and with world design with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was a lot more similar to X and Y in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. You can tell that this is an ever-changing and ever-evolving platform for them. Think about what they had developed before this. They didn't need to create 3D models and 3D environments. We were playing in a largely 2D with some 3D uh, world environments built in there, like some of the buildings on the DS era. But the Pokemon games were in 2D. Red and Blue, Gold and Silver, Emerald, Ruby and Sapphire, Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. You go on and on. All of these were 2D games as they slowly but surely, as the hardware got better, introduced more 3D elements, but it was sprite-based. We didn't have Pokemon models back then. Eventually, the sprites began to move when we got into the black and white era, and they actively moved, but before that, it was also an advancement. In Generation 4 and in Generation 3, we saw the refinement of animations for the sprites when they entered battle. But this has always been an advancement for them. And you have to wonder, is their creative energy really being used to what it was meant to be? Are these teams optimized? And I've seen this discussed in the community at length. Are they optimized for a 3D space? We're gonna find out very soon. Because Sword and Shield had its issues. It had its graphical limitations. And a lot of people, I think rightly so, felt that when you look back at the history of Pokemon games, yes, they reuse models, they reuse assets. It's not inherently a problem. I think the criticism is more warranted towards how do those assets look? And when you see the same assets, which might be a little disappointing time and time again, it becomes frustrating for the player because they expect to see more change than there actually is. 
that's ultimately what I think the dialogue needs to become, is how do we get the best models for the future of Pokemon? And how are these models implemented in a way which makes the games the best that they can be? And I think looking back at history, is what we need to do. As I mentioned earlier in the video, take a look at Battle Revolution. It was the last console Pokemon game, which was a battle simulator. It was the last in that kind of trilogy of Stadium, of Coliseum, XD Gale of Darkness, and Battle Revolution. The console battle sim games, some of them had a story, some of them didn't. Do you think there's things that Game Freak can take from the history of Pokemon models and really make their new games better? Or do you think this discussion is not very, is giving them too much credit. Do you think we should be more critical of what these models are? Do you think we should see brand new designed models and brand new character models in every single game? I would love to know what you guys think. And like I said before earlier in the video, if you are not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It does a ton to support me and it does a ton to show me that you guys want to see more videos like this and leave a like as well. All appreciate it. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.